Welcome back, everybody, to the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. So, what have we got today? Fears of a second wave of Chinese coronavirus as another wave raises its ugly head. And 36 of the new cases are in Beijing, the capital of China. His Majesty, the King of Thailand does not want the government to use less majest laws on its citizens and has asked for it to be stopped. Less majest means don't say anything naughty about the King and the Queen of Thailand or it usually ends up in a jail sentence. Huawei, a Chinese-owned company ready to take part in the 5G development in Thailand. Many other countries have rejected them due to security reasons. Let's find out why. Thailand's travel bubble open to foreign tourists. The travel bubble meaning that if your country has the Chinese coronavirus under control, your nationals do not have to wait the two-week quarantine period and same for the Thai people visiting your country. And Thailand is to use natural rubber in future for all construction of roads throughout Thailand. Fears of a second wave of Chinese coronavirus in Beijing, China. Mainland China reported 49 new confirmed cases of the Chinese coronavirus, down by 57 a day earlier, the National Health Authority said on Monday morning. 36 of the new cases were in Beijing, the same number reported from the capital a day earlier, and tied for the highest daily infection count for the city since authorities started releasing data. The case origins is still being investigated by authorities, but initial data seems to suggest that it came from a large market. Municipal authorities shut down sporting events, tourism sites in the capital on Saturday. Restaurants are once again discouraged from accepting large crowds for dining purposes. Eleven residential complexes near the market have been locked down, its residents forbidden from leaving. The total number of Chinese coronavirus cases in mainland China now stands at 83,181. The death toll remains unchanged at 4,634. His Majesty does not want Thailand to use the less majest law. The law as it stands, which is section 112, insulting or defaming the royal family. Whoever defames, insults or threatens the king, the queen or the heir apparent shall be punished with imprisonment of 3 to 15 years. Report Without Borders calls on the authorities to stop using the less majest law both to jail critics and to deter the media from covering the monarchy also urged the Thai authorities to stop using draconian legislation to gag critical and independent media, censor the internet and spy on bloggers, and anyone posting critical information on social networks. Thailand's less majest law has not been invoked against anyone in Thailand in the past few years because of the wishes of His Majesty the King, said Prime Minister Priyat Achinachar. His Majesty the King does not want to use Thailand's strict, less majest laws, but the Thai Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat says people should still be careful what they say about the Thai monarchy. While the PM is saying less majest laws will not be used, other similar laws have been invoked, such as sections in the Computer Crimes Act, which charges people who wrote posts online critical of the Thai monarchy. The PM is warning students, activists and those involved in any anti-monarchy movements to be careful about what they say and write online. The law was not used because His Majesty has mercy. Some ties charged with minor offences have fled the country. An alleged political activist who was illegally abducted in Cambodia fled Thailand after he was charged with violating the Computer Crimes Act for running a Facebook page critical of the military government. Prime Minister Priyat Achinachat says he has no idea why some have fled. He says the less majest law has not been used for a few years, but there are consequences for distorting information about the monarchy. I plead with everyone, as ties, you must not believe distorted information or news 
from haters, mongers, because it's not true. You must look behind their motive and see what they really want. And why would you become their tool? Only yesterday the PM issued a warning to people allegedly PM described as a movement to undermine the monarchy. But he said His Majesty the King asked him not to use the less majestic laws against them. As a Thai, I have pity for them. I'm not a cruel person who can order someone killed, said the Prime Minister Priyat Achinacha. So in hindsight, I'm warning every foreigner that goes to Thailand, do not say anything wrong about the royal family. The Thai people love their royal family and you will probably get a reaction that you were not really expecting. Five G is about to be real in Thailand. Bangkok Chinese tech giant Huawei expressed its readiness to take part in a 5G development plan in Thailand. 5G is about to be real. Adoption of the advanced technology heralds the dawn of a whole new world for communication in Thailand. Huawei Technologies Thailand CEO met Prime Minister Priyat Chanacha on Friday to donate 500,000 face masks for the fight against the coronavirus. Chinese Huawei Technology informed Priyat that the company's plans for 5G network development included 5G Ecosystem Innovation Center project, according to a Thai government spokeswoman, Nariman Pinyasanawat. Ms. Nariman said the Prime Minister expressed his appreciation for Huawei's willingness to cooperate with Thailand in telecommunication development as the country aimed to become the leader in digital technology in the region. Huawei has had a lot of controversy around the world due to security reasons and the Chinese Communist Party. The UK reports have emerged saying that UK National Cyber Security Centre is conducting a new review into the risks associated with Huawei to participate in some countries 5G projects. Australia and the US have warned against Huawei. Is Huawei the only 5G supplier? No, there are three companies, Huawei, Nokia and Ericsson, that analysts say can provide 5G technology. Huawei has the lead in the total telecommunication market share. Now listen to this very carefully, this is the problem with Huawei. China's 2017 national intelligence law saying all organizations and citizens shall support, assist and cooperate with national intelligence efforts in accordance with the law. The US and Australia believe that Huawei could be used by the Chinese government for espionage. The US especially has lobbied its allies to ban Huawei and the 5G involvement in that network. The US says it won't send intelligence over networks that could be compromised or hijacked by the Chinese Communist Party. Washington and Canberra believe that Huawei could easily build access points known as backdoors that would allow it to take control of 5G networks to either hack or to take them down or take over mobile connection devices to perform hostile actions. Such secret backdoors could be installed into the equipment over time allowing Beijing's Communist Party to penetrate networks. And the Chinese Communist Party can instruct Huawei, even if they don't want to, to do anything they want under Chinese Communist Party law. So if Huawei is involved in Thailand's 5G network, who knows what Huawei is forced to hand over to the Chinese Communist Party about Thailand. And to Thai politicians, are you going to be happy using a 5G network if the Chinese Communist Party forces Huawei to abide by China's law and hand over sensitive information about Thailand? <laughs> Thailand, after implementing the fourth phase of the easing of anti-COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, the Ministry of Tourism, Sports, Public Health, Interior and Foreign Ministers will propose a travel bubble plans to the government's Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration. The Tourism and Sports Minister Pipet expressed his confidence in Thailand's tourism sector and the country's ability to deal with the Chinese coronavirus situation. 
The travel bubble will reopen the country to international visitors, limiting visitors to those from countries where the outbreak is well controlled. It is a bilateral cooperation on tourism, and many countries around the world are also interested in this concept. The various ministries are now looking into implementing and negotiating with selected countries. Various protocols and precautionary measures. In its initial stage, the travel bubble will reopen the country to foreign interpreters and patients seeking medical services and appointments in Thailand. The country is expected to welcome about 1,000 foreigners a day. Now, if it works out well, more groups will be allowed to enter the country. The travel bubble will not impose the 14-day quarantine, but other measures have been prepared to ensure public safety. A mobile application will be used to help track international visitors after arriving in the kingdom. The potential of the country's tourism and health sector will help to revive the domestic economy once the Chinese coronavirus pandemic subsides. All good in theory, let's hope it works out for Thailand. As rubber prices continue to drop worldwide, Thailand's Prime Minister has signed an agreement to use natural rubber in road construction. Prime Minister Priyat Achinachar chaired the signing ceremony of an agreement to use local Thai rubber in road constructions, part of an effort to help the country's financially strapped rubber farmers. The Economic Intelligence Centre has predicted a gloomy outlook for rubber prices in Thailand this year. Above all, due to tepid demand from China and increased domestic supply, Thailand traditionally relies on Chinese consumption of its rubber, with 40% exports destined for the world's second largest economy. Thai rubber is exported largely to make automotive tyres. Rubber also helps reduce road accidents. Even more, the method will increase the safety of Thailand's roadways. The achievement is above all the result of Government Institute studies into road accidents and fatalities. It also has the added benefit of aiding the nation's rubber growers. The Ministry of Transport will also cover concrete barricades with natural rubber. The method certified by the Institute of Scientific and Technology Research, it was tested in South Korea, proving to be effective at reducing the adverse effects of road accidents. According to the Ministry of Transport, the coverage process is to take place between the 2020 and 2022, covering 12,282 kilometres of road, utilising over a million rubber trees, or about 1 million tonnes of rubber sap, accounting for 71% of growers' income, or just over 30 billion baht. And believe me, that is a lot of sap. Rubber has for decades made important contributions to the global economy. Many countries, especially those within Asia, are also actively involved in supplying the world with natural rubber. The biggest demand for natural rubber is in the automobile sector, principally for tyres. Consequently, 70% of the global natural rubber demand comes from the tyre manufacturing industry. So, as well as doing the tyres, they're going to do the roads now in Thailand. I I don't know if that'll affect your brakes. I mean, rubber on rubber, that, that'd be really, uh, really breaking, wouldn't it? I mean, if I was uh, in Thailand, I'd be getting in the uh, uh, windscreen business. So I reckon a lot of people are going to go through them. But anyway, it sounds like a great idea and a good, good use for rubber and putting the um, Thai economy back on track. <laughs> 